our dear viewers and listeners. We we'll greet you all in the wonderful and precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Again, this is the day the Lord has made. And we shall rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you to today's Bible study. As we continue our wonderful journey in this fantastic book of Revelation. So as you invite others to join in, let's humble ourselves, dedicate this moment to God in prayer. Let's pray. Father, we thank you. Yes, you are awesome. You are worthy. You deserve our worship. Yes, you deserve our adoration. Yes, you deserve our time. Yes, you deserve our best. Yes, you alone are worthy of all the praise and glory. Mm. Today we yield ourselves as vessels into your hands. Yes, Use us to project your word, yes, your mind, mm. and the message of salvation. Yes, that we might be ready for your coming. Yes, we yield to you, precious Holy Spirit. Yes, have you. May the glory, the honor, the power, and all the praise mm-hmm. be yours alone. Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you again for joining us. We will be taking our text today from the book of Revelation, chapter 21. From verse 18. But before we get there, I was watching this program. program And they were showing various cities. Basically, what they did not give you the name of the city. But they just show you a glimpse of the skyline of this city. And then it is up to you to tell them which city it is. Even from where I stood, I could tell most of these cities. Cities like Paris, Paris, New York, New York, Rio de Janeiro, Rio de Janeiro, Rome, Roma. Shanghai, Echa Shanghai, Tokyo, Eche Tokyo, Venice, Eche di Venice, Chicago, Neche Chicago. All these are easily recognizable. You know, be ango kubiaula by the skyline. Go since it a kubwa mvuwe bizimbe video. Because each of them has a unique architecture. Kuba anga biyona bili ne nzimbe biaula kubidala. The landscape is different. Enfa na ne ya ukana nyu. As a matter of fact, each city has a unique skyline. Era buri buri chivu gachi ne nzimbe ye 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 bizimbe ya ukana kubidala. But as we see the skyline, this is what we don't see. Ne kati guenga maso gasi gaza kubwa mvuwe bizimbe walwe chitu chota la ba. What we don't see are the foundations. Chota la ba jamesingi. What we don't see is what makes these buildings tall? What we don't see is where they come from. So today we come to a city that we have been reviewing. We saw it from afar off. Similar to a skyline approach. And it was glittering. We then went closer to it. John did not give us just a snapshot. When the angel invited him to see the bride, to see the wife of the Lamb, he did not just give him a skyline view. He brought him close. And then we saw the foundation. Something that you not ordinarily see on a building. Because the foundation is buried underground. We saw the materials there. And then last week, after seeing the structure, we then 
saw the measurements. Now today, we will be viewing the materials that make up this magnificent structure. Having understood that this city is the representation of God's people. Who is the bride of Christ? Washed and purchased by the blood of the Lamb. With that understanding, we get into today's word. And the Bible tells us that the construction of its walls was of jasper. The city was pure gold. Like clear glass. The foundation of the wall of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper. The second sapphire. The third chalcedony. The fourth emerald. The fifth sardonyxi. The sixth sardius. The seventh chrysolite. The eighth berry. The ninth topaz. The tenth chrysopress. The eleventh jacinth. And the twelfth amethyst. The twelve gates were twelve pearls. Each individual gate was of one pearl. And the street of the city was pure gold. Like transparent glass. Let's look. At this wonderful structure. Because like we said previously. Let's look at it piece by piece. Let's start on the foundation. Because if the foundation is not strong enough. Then the building will not be strong enough. The foundation the Bible says that this was clearly seen. Ideally, foundations are not seen. But this one is visible. And it is not only visible, but you can see every layer from the bottom. This city is 12 layers thick. With each layer defined by a jewel. You have jasper. You have sapphire. You have chalcedony. Emerald. Sardonyx. Sardia. Sardio. Chrysolite. Berulo. Topaz. Topaz. Chrysoprase. Jacinth. And Amethyst. Verse 19-20. to Why would the Lord go to tell us the different makeup of each layer. Because each one of them has a different color that it radiates. For example, Jasper is, is as clear as a crystal. Sapphire is blue. Sapphire is blue. Chalcedony is greenish blue. Emerald is deep green. Sardonyx is white with brown. Sardius, you guessed it, is red, blood red. Chrysolite is yellow 
yellowish with a cut kind of approach. A year of anana nyomu chenvu. Beryl is green. Beryl o ye wa achila gala. Topaz is yellowish green. Topaz katona gata chila gala ne, ne chenvu. Chrysoprasus is apple green. Kerusoperazo ya kwa talanji ya apple na mugata muno uwe chila gala. Jacinth is blue. Kwa kinso lanji ya blue. Amethyst is purple. Now look at all this ray. It's like a rainbow mixed all up together. Kati aringa nga bola ba musoke mubanga. And you, all this is array differently. Nga byo na bianja uru. But this is the foundation. Kati guno kuturi kumusinji. Beaming with all this radiance together. Nga masa masa no kwa kaya kana gona wamu. This reveals a nature. Of so many colors brought together. Ngo kutela nje zinja ulunozi gata wamu. Coming into the foundation. Ngaziri musi nji. Which we said represents the 12 apostles. Jetuwa yugela kuunti jichi kilida wa tume kumi na wabibu. And their teaching which points to the cornerstone who is Christ. Nenji kiliza ya wenge tusonga mjinje yo musona ye Yesu Christ. So from Christ. Katipo kufa kukristo. We have a doctrine going out. Ulawe nji kiliza jevasi. We have a message. Going up. What will back up about where it is that then comes back and points to Christ. But able to song or come away to Christ. So we understood that the cornerstone is the first stone you put in the corner. To what again a ginger yomuson de kuru yabasu kamu kuzimba. And it is that from that point that the builders built at a diagonal at 90 degrees. Kata omusong do muzimbi wata ni koku zimba kunju yezo zo nesu. So if you went one direction, you came back through the other direction. Elaye wa kwa ato olui ulumu wa malikizo okomye omu lui olu. So you have all these layers. Kati binevienja olu vyo nobi dina. Coming from the cornerstone. Gabyo nabi sivu kakufa mjinjeri omu sonda. Coming to the cornerstone. Ate viko mao wali mjinjeri omu sonda. Which represents the message of the apostles. Yue wichi kilio wako wawe baba tumbe. Which is stemming from Jesus Christ. And is this pointing to Jesus Christ. That is the foundation. And that is what radiates with the glory of God. That is almost indescribable. That why all that? Because it points to something. This message represents the wisdom of God. This is what Paul writes Paul, in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 10. If you care, let's read. When he speaks of the manifold wisdom of God, that is to be made known by the church, to the the rulers and the authorities in the heavenly places. Why? Because Christ has been made unto us the wisdom from God. But this wisdom is made manifest in various ways. And so the stones represent that radius of the wisdom that is manifold that points Christ. Manifold from the context that Paul brings it out. Speaks to many colored. So it speaks to the multicolored wisdom of God that flashes all truth as revealed of Christ and from Christ. Praise be to God. Can we make the next step to the world? Verses 12 and verse 18. We see the walls come through. And in the olden days, walls were for protection. A city without walls was always vulnerable. But I want you to understand what is happening here. Remember, we don't have 
enemies anymore. The message here is that the what tormented you on earth what disturbed you what caused you sleepless nights when we talk of the date it will be no more when we talk about sickness and disease it will be no more when we talk about crime it will be no more when we talk about death even that will be no more so this tells you that there is eternal security that surrounds the saints of God this symbolizes to us that everything that causes pain today is temporary there will be a moment when all this will be known. The Bible talks about the gates made of pearls. Verse 12, verse 13, to verse 21. We see pearls. Now, pearls is an interesting one. Every time you see a pearl, it speaks of beauty coming out of pain. Let, let me explain. A pearl is formed from a living thing. It is formed from an oyster. Now, when a, a grain of sand gets engraved in a shell of an oyster, it causes pain. So the mechanism the oyster has to get rid of this pain excretes a fluid. Now this fluid covers over this grain and it solidifies. So it releases multiple layers that solidifies. And out of this comes a beautiful pearl. So pearl come as a result of irritation. This brilliant, shiny pearl is the oyster's answer to that which wounded it. The pearl owes its existence to the oyster being willing to cover over that which wounded it. Now, here are two parts that we need to understand concerning the part. One is the wounding and then the covering. Let's take it to the cross. Here the Bible says he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquities. And the chastisement of our peace was upon him. By his stripes we are here. Look at what is happening. Because of the wounding, the blood was shed. And it is the blood that then covers us, cleanses us of all unrighteousness. And then we radiate as pearls coming out of the pain. So we all our brightness. We owe our existence as new things. Because of the covering of what irritated us. Which was the sin. Hallelujah to the Lamb. So the blood 
Now, out of the covering of the blood, we have a pearl of great price. So why does the gate, each gate, be made of a pearl? Because this reminds us that no one can enter it. No one can become a part of what God is doing of this brilliant city. On their own merit. Because of Jesus Christ. It is because of the covering of the blood of the Lamb of God. It is because the source of pain which is the sin of man has been covered by the blood of the Lamb. Let's go to this third one which is the streets of gold. We see them in verse 21. At the beginning in verse 18 the city is described this way. It says the construction of its walls was of jasper. The city was pure gold. Like clear grass. The city of God. Gold symbolizes so many things. It symbolizes glory. Gold symbolizes honor. Gold symbolizes majesty. Today, the world considers gold the most noble of all materials. It is the most sought after I. Mineral. And so much that we are even able to overlook its other characteristics that we know of but would not like to articulate. But because God is aesthetic, it speaks of beauty, it speaks of art. Throughout history, men have fought over gold. Conquests have been made because of gold. Alexander the Great built a great empire with with one objective pursuing God. The objective of the great Babylonian Empire was to capture all the gold of the earth. Caesar and the Roman Empire also had the same objective. Men have fought. Men have killed. Men have lied. All in the pursuit of God. Why? Because God, like I stated, is appealing. It has the appeal. Let me look at, let's look at one thing that is often overlooked. And I will ask the question to you. We often say in English, we say as heavy as and the answer is lead. But do you know that God is heavier than lead? That may surprise you. But the fact is, God is heavier than lead. So why is it that when you are heavy hearted, you don't say I'm God hearted. When you have lost your sleep and you have heavy eyes, you say, My eyes are Lead eyed. Why not say God? You see, the most fleeted players 
Abazanyaba singe misinde. Or fastest athletes are given a golden shoe. Oba abadusa abasinga mubane ba we wenga teya zab. Yet we associate God with being fleet footed. Kati zab tu mugera gano muntoli muzanya singa mubane. Yet in actual fact, it is almost twice as heavy as lead. Nenga tama zima zabu azito woku singe chuma chidi. The point is not even the most expensive. Ate mubuwe no siya singa mugona. Other metals like platinum are far more expensive. Waliwa mayinja amalala nga platinum nga gamuendo kusinga zabu. Platinum first of all does not react to air. It doesn't react to water. It doesn't react to most of the, the other minerals that come in contact with it. Jinja la platinum terita la gante vintebya wabija nebichu senda vika yavyo. Temperatures that would smelt gold don't touch the platinum. E bugum leva kose sa o kuata zabu neva mulongo sa ate taina cha chusa kujindali ya platinum. Platinum is as rare as gold. Platinum na yita la bika la bika ngaza. So why would the street not? Why would the city not be gold? I mean platinum. Why would the streets not be platinum? Katuacha sala wante ngulo tazi zibi sa platinum na ina kose sa zabu. What is God talking about? Katu la chichi cha cha galasi. He's trying to paint a message. I know baka boy. You see, gold Zabu. may not be the most expensive metal. It may not have all the, the properties that platinum has. But in terms of nobility, nothing outshines it. Nothing is as radiant. It's not about the density. It's not about the other properties of not of not being able to be murdered. It is about each cherish. Man, as we know them. Ngawomani are naturally hunters of gold. Muchikula a musimi wa zabu. It is no wonder that the city is painted as gold. Kila tachukwe unchante basa na wechi zimbe de tizuga ne wechi zimbe sa zabu. This metal captures the hunger of every man. Look at what the scriptures say. I was looking up at the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia. And it points out that 367 times references are made about God in the word of God. No metal has been frequently mentioned in the Old Testament. Writings of God than in terms of any other metal. There are about a dozen different words for God in the Bible. In the New Testament, God is mentioned 41 times. 21 of them of the 41 is in the book of Revelation. 16 of the 21 are positive. Two of them are negative. And three times it is mentioned within the neutral. The first time we hear of the mention of God is in the book of Genesis chapter 2. When they talk about the river Havila. And it is mentioned in the positive line. As good in the land. So the first reference of God is good. And the last reference of God is in this text that we just read. It is also mentioned in the good light. So, God is a symbol of wealth. Every kingdom in history, in and out of the Bible, 
Bible was noted for its abundance of God. And this is the reason why the final kingdom of God's people is pictured as one of pure, refined God. Why? Because God has been the test of glory for kingdoms. And if God's people are to have the best in the end, then the streets have to be of God. Now, now look at this. Look at this. The thing that we hunger for is reflected as a public good in heaven. In this city, it is a public good. Here, it is the measure against which we measure currency. It is the reserve of the wealth of nations. The wealth is measured against the reserves of gold that you have. Isn't it wonderful? See, man's hunger for God. <laughs> the Bible is trying to tell us that it is in the wrong places. The goal is the good news. The gospel is the go- oh. hunger that takes us to where this God should be. Jesus Christ is the God. Jesus Christ is the satiation for man's hunger. He is God's God that will make you rich forever. And guarantee you a city, a place, in a city of God for all eternity. Now you may say what I'm saying is far-fetched. But I want to take us back to the very beginning. As the Lord was speaking to the church, seven churches. Revelation chapter 2. He goes to verse 17. And he speaks to a church that prided itself in the wealth and the gold that it has. That was the church in Laodicea. Now the message to the church in Laodicea is profound. It was a church that had wealth. It was a church that had God. But look at what Jesus tells them. He rebukes them. And he says, You say I am rich. I have acquired wealth. And do not need a thing. He paints their picture before them. He says, but you do not realize that you are wretched, pitiful, poor, blind, and naked. Listen to this. He's trying to say that everything that you think you have, you don't. Through the eyes of eternity, through the eyes of heaven, this is the picture that you have. What heaven sees is wretchedness. It sees pitifulness. It sees poverty. Poverty with all the gold from the eyes of heaven that's poverty it sees blindness it sees nakedness this was the center of 
the cloth industry. It was in Laodicea that clothes were made. Laodicea and sent out to the other parts of Asia. Yet from the eyes of heaven, there were a naked people. And Jesus goes on to verse 18. He paints the picture to these blind people who had the wrong kind of wealth. He tells them there is a greater treasure in life. There is something you are missing. Verse 18, the master gives advice. He says, I counsel you to buy from me God refines in the fire so that you can become rich. What you have leads to poverty. It is from me that you can get what will make you rich. Jesus is in essence saying here that it is me that has the refined gold. It is me that has the gold of real value. Come to me. He has the monopoly of the refined gold that will go on throughout all eternity. The pure gold that will make you rich, not just now, but forever. Think about it. What is it that you are pursuing? It says in Matthew, don't seek after what the heaven, heaven are seeking after. It says your father knows about them. But you Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. When we see the city coming down, when we see the bride of Christ coming down from its walls to its streets to its foundation the radiance, the glory, the majesty that is revealed points to one thing. Value. The message to us today is that the bride of Christ is valuable. The value that cannot be determined by what you have or what you don't have. The value that cannot be determined by the GDP of any nation. The value that cannot be attached to the gold or the minerals upon the face of the earth. It speaks of of the value that points to the foundation. That's why you don't see the skyline. That's why he takes you to the foundation where we have Christ as the cornerstone. That's why he takes you to the very beginning to show you how you are in him, built up into a city of magnificence. That's why you need not to reflect on your circumstances, but point to the one, to the rock from whom you are Going back to the foundation who is Christ Jesus. Yes, and there pick the identity of your value. Your 
true value is not in their education you have attained. Now, is education important? Yes, it is. But that is not your true value. Your true value is not even in the city or village or circumstances under which you are born. Not where you are, not the job you work at. Nothing that we think right now determines your value. Because when John sees the city, which represents the people of God, what he sees from the very foundation is precious metal. This value from the foundation. He sees value from where it all began. Value all the way to the very top. Value radiating the presence, the glory of God who has determined to dwell in the midst of his people. Your value is based on God who dwells within you. Your value is based on this fact that out of the pain of sin, the covering of the blood made you into a pearl of great worth. The value of you as an individual, of you as the church, is a value beyond measure. What determines your value is the blood. The blood of the Lamb. The value of the pride is determined by the blood that washes the Lamb. The pride. That's why you cannot be determined. The value cannot be defined by where you are right now. Your value is determined. Because you have been washed by the blood. And now where you are, God dwells with you. And in you. It speaks of a foundation. It is beyond measure. You in Christ Jesus. Yesu are valuable. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. You have value because God dwells in you. So let me address this one person who has never given his life to Jesus Christ. You may have what the Earth considers as value. You may have the wealth of the nations. Your account could be loaded right now. But you are not different from what Jesus is addressing the church in Laodicea. Five things define you. And he says, and this you don't need to overlook. You are pitiable. You are poor. You are naked. You are wretched. You are blind. But all this can change. And how does it change? When you 
over it. Jesus in your life. Yes, as your personal Savior. And allow his blood to cleanse you and make you into a pearl of great one. That is how we get in. Through the blood. So will you say this proud me? God of heaven. The creator of the universe. The restorer of mankind. I am a sinner. Because all of us have sinned. All of us have fallen short of the glory of God. Lord, I am pitiable. I am blind, I am naked. I am poor. I am wretched. I need a savior in my life. Jesus, come into my heart. Come into my life. Wash me safe. I believe that you are the savior of the world. That you came on this earth. Died on the cross of Calvary. And by your shed blood. My life will be washed. And will become a pearl of great worth. Lord, I pray. Please forgive me. I believe that you rose from the dead. And when I believe in you, I rise with you. Lord of glory, thank you for saving me. Amen. 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 Now, if you gave your life to Jesus Christ, right now, raise that number on your screen. Please call. Tell us this wonderful news. Share with us what God has done. It is wonderful to get to know many and many and many are being added to this number. Of wretched, filthy, pitiable, blind, poor men and women. Whom the blood of Christ has made into powers of great one. Now to you who is born again, get it from me. The message is simple. You are valuable. And you are of great worth. Live like it. Don't sell yourself short. Your life needs to radiate. The different levels of the glory. From the foundation of the God who loved you and gave himself up to you. Live like it. You are valuable. You are of great worth. You are valued before God. Treat your life that way. Live that way. And God richly bless you. So for you watching us, it's been a pleasure. We long to see you again next week as we go deeper into this world. Today we sign off with this message. You are Valuable. God richly bless you. Shalom. Mirembe.